There have been RNLI lifeboats at Staithes and Runswick for 150 years. In that time, they have saved more than 400 lives and rescued countless more from danger at sea. Their volunteer crews of local men and women are on call day and night every day of the year. It takes less than two minutes to get into their gear. And within eight minutes of the alarm first being raised, they're ready to launch. Whatever the state of the tide or the weather. They're heading out onto a North Sea fraught with dangers for sailors, seamen, anglers and holidaymakers. And for the lifeboat crews themselves. As with all lifeboat stations, the story of Staithes and Runswick RNLI is a history of heroism, but sometimes of tragedy. The very first lifeboat at Staithes was launched in 1875, a great day for the village. It was powered by oar and sail, and a 10-man crew drawn from the local fishermen, who in turn elected the first coxswain, Joe Ben Verrill the first of many Staithes men to be decorated for bravery at sea. The lifeboat rescued seamen from the many shipwrecks on the treacherous local reefs and scars and helped fishermen when their cobbles were caught in a storm in an era when Staithes harboured more than 50 fishing boats. And when the crew were out fishing, their women stepped in to launch the lifeboat at both Staithes and Runswick, where they became national celebrities. On one stormy night, Charles Horn's crew rescued three fishermen, but then all of them were thrown into the sea and feared drowned. They were saved by their cork life belts and picked up by a passing ship, all but John Crooks, the first of four local RNLI men to die on active service. There were heroes too. For saving six drowning sailors, two local crewmen went to Buckingham Palace for their medals. The earliest known footage of Staithes comes from this 1928 RNLI film. It was made to show the superiority of motor lifeboats over traditional rowing boats. the crew was mustered by the firing of a rocket, the Maroon. Then, as now, the first to arrive manned the lifeboat. A Belgian steamer, the Princess Clementine, had run aground on the scar at Staithes. Ironically, it was not the motor lifeboat seen here with actors in a reconstruction, but Staithes' old rowing boat that reached the wreck first and carried off the real rescue, winning more medals for heroism in the process. The wreck itself was genuine enough at very low tides, the ship's boiler can still be seen today off Staithes. But the days of the rowing lifeboats were numbered. Staithes station was closed down, and the first motor lifeboat went to Runswick Bay. Its coxswain, Robert Patton, holds an imperishable place in the station's history. He died from his injuries in saving a seaman from a sinking ship, and was awarded a posthumous gold medal, the RNLI's equivalent the Victoria Cross. Robert Patton's death, 
the first lifeboatman in a decade to die, touched the nation. And in his honor, in 1934, Princess Mary came to Runswick to rename the lifeboat for Robert Patton, the always ready. Pathé newsreel cameras were there to record the royal occasion. Over the years, Brunswick lifeboats launched 200 times until 1978, a sad day for Brunswick and the many statesmen on the crew. We're taking our lifeboat away, you know, at one at Brunswick Bay. She's a 37-foot Oakley, self-writer, and when we first got her, I wasn't at all sure I liked her. But she soon proved me wrong, I'm happy to say. Served us all well on many a day when some poor soul was caught out. June 30th, they tell me she's going. There's be a sad farewell. Like saying goodbye to a well-loved friend. Trying to smile an old time you're knowing you might never say it like again. I'll never watch Harry with tractor again. Nor Jeff grinning out back at Winch. Or George Saker flagging me down at Lane End as in cars we scrambled after Maroon's made us flinch. The shrill of the whistle saying, let go strops. The roar of the tractor as she pulls back on falls. The bump as soft carriage we drop. And the lift of the deck as the first sea boils safely under a keel. And I'll never forget as long as I live the skill of Nigel on wheel. We'll miss you, Royal Thames. I've no doubts about that. Your going will leave us all feeling flat. Cos you're not just leaving a crew, you see. You're leaving a caring community. And the fact that you're going isn't our idea. Cos every one of us would rather you stayed here. But decisions have been reached with the powers on high. All we can say is, God bless, farewell, goodbye. But now, Stades reopened its station with a very different lifeboat design, the rigid inflatable. New crews were trained, often from new generations of old lifeboat families. The new inshore lifeboats were capable of 30 knots, virtually uncapsizable, strong enough to tow a fishing boat, and versatile enough, day or night, to work close to the foreshore and cliffs when walkers were cut off by the rising tide. Lifeboat, this is Stage Shore Bay, on zero, over. Uh, Stage Shore Bay, Stage Lifeboat, yeah. Uh, have you managed to discuss uh, best way of evacuation with Skinner Grove, four bells, over? Yeah, Lifeboat, uh, Shore Party. Um, a few of the casualties getting pretty cold. It's a bit of an awkward walk back out. Uh, just going to wait for these other couple of guys to arrive and then we'll come to a collective decision on what's the best course of uh, evacuation, over. And just as in 1875, the christening of a new lifeboat at Stades is still a proud day for the village. I'm delighted and honoured to name this new Atlantic 75 class lifeboat, Pride of Leicester. May God guide and protect all those who sail it. The modern Stades crews continue to win awards for heroism at sea. Most recently in 2014, when two visitors were swept over the harbour wall by high seas. Gone. We were in the sea. I remember going down under the water and I popped back up and I could hear shouting and I could see Peter at the wall. The most terrifying moment of our lives. And I just kept shouting, please help me. Just please help me. I can't swim. If it wasn't for Sean, and the lifeboat men, both Peter and I, would have been dead. And they were absolutely amazing. 
I can't put into words how grateful we both are because we saved our lives. <laughs> Behind the scenes, fundraising is vital to keep the work going. Above all, the RNLI is made up of volunteers, shore helpers and supporters from the local community, all dedicated to saving lives at sea. The RNLI has never taken a penny from government. It is a charity wholly funded by public generosity. Please consider a donation and stay safe at the seaside.